let your crew do it like <laughs> I did today. I, because because that was our first ever capsize, it was interesting because Tina got over to the boards. I actually wanted to see if Tina had enough right weight to ride the boat, which is great. She does actually. Tina did a good job. She did do a good job. She did a great <laughs> job. Um, most people in this fleet are riding their boats correctly for my liking, but one person needs to be on that centre board. I only like the one person on the centre board. I like that second person to be, as soon as the boat's on its side, swim straight into the cockpit and grab that toe strap that's up in the air. So as soon as the boat comes upright, that person's in the boat ready to grab the tiller, even if they don't know what to do with the tiller, to grab the tiller in their hand and to grab whatever, just to keep the boat stable and then to move their body weight to keep the boat upright. Because if you do that, you're not going to go back in for a swim. The time I see people going back in for a swim is when they do it the old-fashioned way, and I know that's what people used to do, but it just doesn't make sense to me where someone swims up to the bow and holds the bow, because now no one's in the boat, and the boat's rocking wherever it wants to rock. And the first person gets in, well, that second person now still needs to swim down the boat. Well, why not just get that person in the boat straight away and just alleviate swimming back down the boat? And because we've got these self-training boats, it's just, it makes life so much easier. And, yeah, it was good for us to go for a swim today because we should actually practice it. Because it's going to... I used to be renowned for going for swims. There was a season there where we'd go to every regatta and we were the people that soil tested every lake and every <laughs> bit of water we, we were sailing on because we'd swim every single race. It's because we couldn't drive it. It's because of that horrible... <laughs> It's because of a certain era that had boats that did weird things when you were sailing downwind. And you'd just, you'd go for a swim. And the funny thing is, I tend to go for more swims on a light day than I do on a windy day, which makes no sense to me, but yep. that's when we go it's for a swim. Yeah. It means we're probably pushing the boat harder than we can. Like, Kylie has a go at me when I'm winning a regatta in, a, in another class and I still just keep trying to push the boat harder and harder and harder and all of a sudden I go splat. She said, well, what were you pushing it so hard for? Don't push it so hard. I just, I've got to learn to sometimes calm down a bit. Yeah, you've got to be also not scared of swimming. Uh, I think you said, become good at swimming, believe it or not, is a good thing. I know that um, it's a funny thing to think about, but if the inevitable happens and you're going to capsize, have an exit strategy. Um, I've sailed a lot of skiff classes and particularly with all the excitement with moths and all of that nowadays and they're being, you know, on the web, everyone can see what people are doing and what they're doing around capsizing. And you see the world champion let go of his boat and do the Superman through the air and let it capsize. He's thought about his exit strategy for that capsize to make it the shortest possible, least damaging capsize he can do. And a couple of capsizes I saw today, well, not capsize, but near capsizes I saw today were actually these guys probably subconsciously thinking of their exit strategy. Um, do a bad job, okay, what would be the worst thing? You let the boat slide out and end up on a beam reach with your crew on the centre board, which is exactly what Peter did, which means you're probably spending 10 seconds on your side with one crew not even getting wet and the other one already in the floor of the boat ready to get up. You capsize and attack. If you both end up to lure of the capsize, your boat's gonna end up upside down. Okay, that's not an exit strategy. You've got to think about, okay, I've got to duck under the boat, get up, whatever. It's all about minimising those losses, even if it's a capsized situation you're talking about. And I tell you, that the moths, funny example, but they were capsizing on purpose to remove weed from their foils because they can't lift them up. But they actually got really good at capsizing to remove weed from their foils. Who would have thought that would be a strategy to win world titles? But hey... It's all part of the big picture.